As Catholics, we thank God for the gift of life. We are called to develop our talents, to become people who love God and each other. Hence, our most important commandment, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. When it comes to end of life matters, we want to be sure that we are making good decisions for ourselves and for loved ones. It is reassuring that we do not have to make these decisions alone. Since our faith matters to us, we should turn to it especially in the most difficult of times where we can be assured of Christ's presence and the ministry of his church. The church points to some long-standing principles to assist us in our decision-making process. These decisions are not always easy, but should be approached in prayer. Fundamentally, we must provide and receive what is called the necessities of life. These are basic forms of care, such as food, water, air, warmth, and clothing. The Church uses the moral categories of ordinary and extraordinary care, now more accurately referred to as proportionate or disproportionate care. These concepts help guide our ethical decision-making at the end of life. For example, continuing to use a treatment which has become ineffective in that it cannot cure the patient would count as disproportionate care and is not obligatory to use. Likewise, treatment which a patient experiences as a burden could also be deemed disproportionate, meaning that the person could choose to stop treatment or not even embark on it. For example, a dread of chemotherapy might prevent someone from starting such treatment. It is important to remember that treatment options are the patient's choice, despite others' advice and concerns in some situations. Some people are worried that if treatment is withdrawn, they might be guilty of participating in euthanasia. We can reassure them that in these circumstances, it is the underlying disease that causes death and not one's decision to stop treatment. It is also important to affirm that the Catholic Church is not what is called vitalist, meaning human life is to be sustained at all costs. There are situations where it is clearly appropriate to stop futile or overly burdensome treatments. Pain can be defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage. An important task of end-of-life care is to assure patients that their pain levels are managed. Pain, in addition to appropriate medication, can also be controlled in rare cases by deep sedation. Questions are often asked about the morality of deep sedation. Pope Pius XII issued teaching on this as far back as 1957, stating that such procedures were in fact morally licit because the intention is to relieve pain and not cause death. The term suffering, however, includes enduring the physical woes of sickness or injury, as well as the experience of psychological or spiritual distress, which is not so easily medicated, if at all. Suffering comes in many forms, affecting our bodies, minds, and spirits. This can be more difficult to treat than physical pain. Pope Francis reminds us that no one is to be abandoned. Rather, everyone is to be accompanied and made to feel the dignity of being part of a community as a valued person. Each person has the God-given gift and responsibility to make his or her own decisions at the end of life, when still capable and competent. These decisions need to be made in the same way as other decisions by a conscience informed by Catholic teaching. Most of us need some advice when it comes to medical decision making. At the same time, we have to pay attention to church teaching to see if the two sets of advice agree. Conscience formation is the responsibility of each one of us. This includes consulting others when we are unsure about medical diagnoses, church teaching, or the opinions of our family and loved ones. 
Experts can provide necessary information for good treatment choices. They can direct us, but the final decision is up to us. As Catholics, we make these decisions in the context of prayer and discernment, and guided by church teaching. The Catholic Church is strongly committed to helping us live our lives fully to the very end when we believe God will take us home. As a community of believers, we do not see death as the end, but as a transition to the fullness of life in God through the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our Christian faith gives us a different perspective, even though we naturally experience the same human pain and suffering as everyone else. This difference is captured in St. Pope John Paul's letter to the elderly, where he says that in dying, we go from life to life. He writes, it is wonderful to be able to give oneself to the very end for the sake of the kingdom of God. This message gives us hope that each of us will have the same experience of not just dying, but living life to the very end in the hope of the resurrection.